picture here, don't we? Yeah, I think of we the do. Gang. Oh, look, Mr. At the, look at him on the right there. Uncle Bill. Uh, <laughs> that, was that was a great show. It really was. Uh, through the late 60s, early 70s, and uh, he is now involved in uh, a lot of things around Hollywood involving uh, young actors, that sort of thing. And in the business world, he's very busy as well. Say hello to John Whitaker. <laughs> wonder if you're still acting now or, or what are you doing? I keep busy all the time. I know. But uh, currently I am working at CBS mm -hmm. and uh, am a uh, computer consultant there. And uh, Les Moonves and I rub shoulders all the oh time. Oh my gosh. A computer, a computer <laughs> whiz. I got now, yeah. huh? But you know, people just, do people look at you and say, man, I just, they just stare at you. So I, yeah. He hasn't changed a bit. <laughs> <laughs> do you like that or does it get a little um, annoying? It all depends from whom it comes. If it comes from a nice, beautiful young lady like yourself, oh, it's, you. it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. If it comes from an old grandma, it's thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> you know. yeah. hey, think, think back, when you reflect on those days, when you were, you were like six years old when you started mm -hmm. the show, when you reflect on those days, what do you recall most about them? I just recall a, a friendly, fun atmosphere. Um, you know, every day was a new thing. I woke up at six o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. got dressed, Got in the car by 7, to work by 8, in school at 8.05, and uh, studied for a little about 20 minutes. Then on back the set, the, on right, the set, right, yeah. uh -huh. Then onto the set. And uh, the thing that was most scary was being in school. It was not being on the set. You because, hated going to school. Well, <laughs> well, why not? What's scary about school? Well, only because you had to be there 20 minutes. And the, the producers always got mad because they would have everybody out there, and they'd hurry up, you know, the clock has to tick faster mm -hmm. for us because we had to have 20-minute blocks of school or else it didn't count. Well, it seems right. like they would have been concerned about your education. Oh, they always were. They were very good. Yeah. But uh, the most important is just, you know, getting them out there. You know, the cameras are, you know... It's very expensive. You have to get the show exactly. done, That's don't right. you? Huh? Well, I know you're working these days. Um, I guess you would call yourself an advocate for child performers. Right. You really want to make sure that they're taken care of. Do you think a lot of times they're not taken care of? Well, it all depends. You know, there are certain shows that use premature babies to use as, um, uh, you know, newborns when they're like two or three weeks old. And sometimes they don't always, you know, they're putting jelly and all this stuff over on top of the babies, which isn't always the best thing for a baby. But um, mostly I'm concerned more about the young adults and the young kids because I was one, worked as a kid as far as I can remember. I don't remember a time when I wasn't working. Mm -hmm. uh, so the biggest thing we're working with them is making sure that their education is good. Currently, my education was a, an excellent one. I speak five languages. I, you know, am a currently working human being, mm -hmm. uh, have a job, and have tools that I've learned from that. Well, you obviously are very successful. There are others who have been very successful, too, being child actors. But oh, there are those, Foster. Exactly. There, there, there are Howard. those who weren't, including Correct. your co-star, Anissa right. Jones. We have a photo of the two of you working, uh, you know, together. Now, unfortunately... She died from a drug overdose, is that yeah, correct? Yeah, drugs and alcohol. What, what, at happened to these, what happens to these kids that, uh, that, that, that people blame show business for? Well, I wouldn't blame show business in and of itself. It's mostly um, her background and the people around her. Mm -hmm. I know that she had some very um, not positive friends um, that were around her. She was 18. The doctor who prescribed the drugs from which she overdosed mm -hmm. was a Dr. Feelgood. If you had an, an mm -hmm. ID and the money, Anissa was 18 and had the money and uh, unfortunately fell into the wrong crowd because she was 18 and had the money they yeah. could pal around with her. But you know, if, if the young actors don't have the family around them to help guide them, how can, can you or your organization get in the middle of that and help? Well, uh, like myself, I'm very lucky. I, I'm one of eight children, come from a very stable parents. They've been married for 45 plus years. Um, those who don't, we're there to say, we have been there. Listen to us. Someone to you talk know, to. If you have problems, mm -hmm. give us a call, like Macaulay Culkin going through his troubles currently. Uh, you know, we're there. If he wants to call and find out what it's like on the other side after the math, you know, the aftermath of the situation, mm -hmm. we're there to help and be a support system. I think it's wonderful. Now, you, you, we were talking about some of the success stories, yourself included. You mentioned Jodie Foster. Now, That's you, a super you and Jodie Foster made a little bit of movie history, didn't you? <laughs> I was the man who gave her her first stage on-screen kiss. Oh, 
real. No. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Look at this. Was it this? Is that Tom Sawyer? Right. Tom, well, actually, we did two films together. Her very first film, which was a Disney film called Napoleon and Samantha. Then her second was Tom Sawyer, where I played Tom Sawyer, and she was Becky Thatcher. <laughs> well, let me, another fun thing is happening is that uh, you also starred in some great uh, kids' Saturday shows. And those are coming back, folks, on the Family Channel. And when we come back, we're going to have the legendary producer of those shows on the set with John. We'll be back right after this. Exactly. <laughs> We can have it for Dunkin'. Oh, yeah. hey, by the way, Sigmund, how long can you see monsters stay out of the water? Oh, for days. We're the modern kind, you know. Drip dry. Sigmund and the sea monsters. Well, you, of course, recognize uh, John Whitaker there. We, we now welcome to the show to join in the conversation Marty Croft, one of the great producers hey. of uh, that particular Marty. Hey, creating some of these things that you created, like the sea monster. Well, I, you, wake, you wake up from a nightmare and you come <laughs> up with these things. Actually, Sigmund was created by my brother, <clears throat> Sid. Uh -huh. He went to La Jolla, sat on a rock, believe it or not, mm -hmm. saw a piece of seaweed in the ocean, swam out and got it, called me up, and said, I'm bringing back something that I think is our next show. Are oh you serious? God, yeah. <laughs> so then, of course, everybody said, that, wait a second, where are the drugs? And there were no drugs. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Well, what were you playing against? Was it the puppet? Was there a person inside the monster? Uh, yes. Ac actually, uh, Sigmund is played by uh, Billy Barty. Legendary. Really? Look, he's done oh, 100 yeah. films, Billy he's Barty. We know and Billy. he's done most of our stuff. He did Puff and stuff. Mm -hmm. He did Sigmund. He did... The Bungalows, yeah. he did Dr. Shrinker, he's done a lot of our shows. This is something both of you can, uh, can address, because you were so actively involved in the show. Uh, I know then, the, uh, the, the, the control over the content of shows, for protection of what the children watched, was pretty strict. Has that relaxed now? Can you, ta can you tell me I can't that? figure it out what's happening now. Really? Uh, yeah. Well, uh, well, also with the new, the new uh, law that came in that all the, 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 the stations have to have so many hours of children's programming. Mm -hmm. Now, that's, I think that's an excellent opportunity for Sid and Marty and all the other to bring up more and better children's programming. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I agree and disagree. Really? The part of education, I don't know, on Saturday and Sunday morning on television, I have three kids. I don't know that that's the medium to teach kids. I think if you do real good quality shows, uh -huh. entertaining shows that have some values, <clears throat> that's one thing. Good. But the education part, I don't know, I've always disagreed you with. You don't think there yeah. necessarily has to be a lesson in everything they Well, it see. just seems like every time they do an educational show other than Sesame Street that no one's watching. Well, yeah. okay, let's talk about some of your shows. H.R. Puffin, Puffin Stuff. Love it. Love it. Okay. Was that your first one? Yeah. Was that your first that one? That was our first one, actually. Well, what kind of animal was it? Actually, we created the banana splits for Hanna Barbera first. Uh -huh. Okay, and then this. What, what is Puffin Stuff? He's the mayor of Living Island. Well, I know that, but I mean. He's a dragon. He's a dragon. As of last Tuesday, he's running for president. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, look. And he's I guess you never run out of ideas for well, what Puffin to do. Puffin Stuff, I don't know. You can't seem to kill that with a baseball bat. Yeah. We're going to make a movie of Puffin Stuff. We're making a movie of Land of the Lost at Disney. And uh, we're going to do Sigmund and the Sea Monsters with Pauly Shore. Pauly Shore is oh going to play Johnny. Oh really? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> what's happening to me? <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> Did you John, bring the flute? Johnny's going to play Pauly yeah. Shore. Yeah, 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 yeah. Did you bring the talking flute? Well, the talking flute, Freddie the flute got stolen last year. Oh, no. Seriously? Yes. So what happened was we put out a reward, and then somebody brought him back with a note. They, did, they were afraid of being prosecuted, so they, they brought him back to KTLA newsroom in Los Angeles. So the original flute always had a stand-in. So we don't take the original flute out anymore, oh, okay. but I have the stand-in. You have the stand-in. <gasps> but I, yeah. I didn't want to tell you I had the original flute, because then... Well, I'm glad you told us that the original well, I got Freddie the flute here. It's always been on camera. Let me see. Really? Oh, There's look. Freddie oh, the flute. Oh, there he is. There he is. Oh. Oh. Right, he's Freddie the flute. Close up, close up, close up with it. Oh, hi, Jimmy. Oh, I don't know, Jimmy. What's happening? Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, all right. I love this stuff. <laughs> I love it. Please, I brought the flu. Good. Now, what are, what are a couple of the other shows that are coming back on the Family Channel? We've got, uh, in addition to Puff and stuff, uh, we have the Bugaloos, Sigmund and the Sea Monsters. Mm -hmm. We've got Far Out Space Nuts with Bob Denver, who was Gilligan. And we've got uh, 
Uh, Mar of course, Martha Ray's in the bug well, I was going to say, you were getting, able to get all these wonderful we always, celebrities. We always involved. went after people who were at the height of their career. We, uh -huh. we got Richard Pryor at the height of his career. Well, no, wait, why did they want to do yeah. it? Why? Because it was fun, uh, yeah. number one. It was, it was, it's a great opportunity, and Marty and Sid were wonderful to me. Well, I mean, we did a show called Lidsville, and, and starring Charles Nelson Reilly. Well, as a matter of fact, we have tape. Can okay. we allow, allow us to please roll this, and we'll show you what we're talking yeah, about Yeah, along here. with the Bugaloo. Check the evil eye. Right, boss, one evil eye coming up. One evil eye coming up. Brah! Now, <laughs> tune in downtown Lidsville. I'm Benita Bazaar, and I just dig your music. Yes, it really turns me on. It's just wild, wild, great. Look at that mouth. What a northern self. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Well, you asked you ask a lot of them to, when they uh -huh. come in and, and put them in costume and everything. Did so, you? I did. In fact, I called Charles Mills for Riley a couple of weeks ago to come out and do a promo for us. He says, Marty, you've ruined my career. I'm never going to argue with <laughs> He still has a resentment from 15 years ago. Oh, <laughs> but no, you really have to have something in you that, that thinks like a child, that relates to children. I mean, would your family say you're pretty much a kid at heart? My family. Well, of course. I have three daughters. I have to have a sense of humor. Yeah. yeah. All right, Marty. <laughs> we are creating one new thing, though. It's going to be on in January for the Family Channel. We've got a, a new show called the Okie Doki Show. Okie Doki? Two characters called Okie and Doki that mm -hmm. star in a preschool show. But when, they, when you see them as themselves... Yeah. They hate the show they're in. Oh, really? So it's, oh, it's right. going to be interesting. Oh, well, I, I want to point out, Saturday mornings on the Family Channel, mm -hmm. you see some of this wonderful programming that we've talked about here. You two have made a great team. And on behalf of all of us who've watched television over the years, from Family Fair and all the wonderful shows that mm -hmm. you've done, thank you for some wonderful television. We enjoyed it. We have. You'll be smelling like a rose, a stinking rose, that is, after our 40-clove garlic...